Okay, as many of you are probably aware, and especially if you own a Panasonic GH4 camera, um, that Panasonic today on the 30th of March 2016 released uh, a new update, version 2.1, uh, 2.5, um, for the camera which adds some pretty funky new effects. Um, you've got 4K photo with three variations of that, which I'll come to in a sec. And you've also got the uh, post focus um, feature, which is actually pretty good for certain situations, but for some it's probably a bit of a gimmick. But first of all, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do the upgrade. So if you go to Google and you type in GH4 update, uh, you should come to the Panasonic firmware update page. So if we go to that, then you've got here the DMC GH4 firmware update. Make sure you've got 2.5. You can see here we've got post focus added, 4K photo mode, burst shooting with an external flash, uh, Google Drive with 100 gigabytes of free storage and performance improvement. Uh, all you do then is click the firmware download page and you come to here and you basically go through to check everything's what you want it to be, make sure your camera's on the list. You can see here that the GH4 was updated on March the 30th, 2016. So go through all of this, all of this, all of this. Uh, you can read that obviously to, to make sure you know what you're doing when you're doing the upgrade, but I'll show you now anyway. So you can skip all of that and just accept the license agreement. Um, and then you go to your actual camera body and the upgrade there. So you can see here, click on that, go to DMC GH4, click on the download page, and this page will open. Uh, again, it takes you through the version, what date it was released, and the, the description of that uh, firmware. Uh, and if you go to the bottom, you see here, you've got the download for Windows or Mac, depending on what system you're on. 37 megabyte file, uh, self-extract, just go to uh, the, with the one that obviously suits your system. Click download, and you will get the button there. Save the file, and then you basically open it up in your folder. Now you first of all will get this uh, executable folder, this file here, and what you need to do is just extract it into the same place, and this is the one you want, the bin file with the little traffic cone. Well, it's traffic cone for me because I use the uh, VLC media player, but you need the bin file. So what you then do with that is you format your card with the uh, the GM, GM uh, sorry, or GH4, format the card, put it into your computer, offload this onto that card, you can see here I've got the card stored so if I click on that now you want to put this bin file so if we copy that and paste it you need to paste it into this root folder just there you don't want it to go into any of these because it won't the the camera won't actually find the software and do the update so you just need to put it into there um, and then basically eject that um, card take it out put it into your camera switch the camera on and then press play that will then ask you if you want to do the firmware upgrade. You just go through the process and make sure that you've got a, a full battery because it takes about five minutes. It doesn't use an awful amount of power, but you don't want your camera powering down during an upgrade like this. So make sure you've got enough battery power. Put the card in with the bin file here in the root folder, put it into the camera, switch the camera on, press play, follow the instructions, and then you, your camera will then update you to version 2.5. Okay, so if you followed the instructions correctly, you would have downloaded the .exe file, uh, converted it into a bin file, loaded the bin file from your computer onto the SD card, and then put the SD card and make sure again it's in the, um, the root folder. Load that into the camera, switch the camera on, press play, and then the camera will go through the update process. Again, make sure you've got enough battery power to do that. It takes about five minutes. So once you've done that and it's updated and it's all finished, switch the camera off and back on again. And then when you go into the menu system, ah, before I do that actually, the, uh, the 4K photo and the post focus mode don't show up when you're actually in the manual video mode. Uh, let me just double check that. If I go through those, I'm now on, ah, because it's on, on video setting, you need to be on the photo settings for that to work. So if I just go into manual mode for the camera and then I go into the menu system, you can see as we scroll down, we come to, sorry, I need to go into the camera setting. And if we then scroll down to the second page, you can see we've got the 4K photo mode there. Now I will say that if you've used 4K photo or if you've used one of the other modes, um, the post focus mode, and you've left it on, then the other one won't actually light up. It'll be grayed out. So if you've used uh, post focus mode and you've left it on after using it, the 4K photo mode will be greyed out. You can't use it. That will alert you that you've left the other one on and it works vice versa. In this case, they're both um, switched off at the moment. So if we go down to 4K photo mode, 
press the button and press the menu button again, we can then have a look at which mode we want to be set in. Uh, the top mode is 4K burst. That means when you push the shutter button, it will keep recording until you press stop. And then obviously you can scrub through and uh, pull a photo from each one. So if we just do that quickly, uh, if we press the shutter button, it will start recording one, two, it will actually do about two seconds. So this is the first mode. This is, this is where the camera will just do a quick short burst of about two seconds. So once it's done that, you then press the menu button to save any of the photos. So if we say no for now, and we go down to the bottom here, you can actually see, you can scrub through the actual image that you've recorded. So it's a two second clip and you can go to frame by frame, find the one you want, push the menu button, and then save the image. Yes, and it will save a, a form, um, sorry, a 4K still from that frame grab. So that's the first mode. And then if we go back again, back out of there, back into the menu, back into the 4K menu, and we pick the second 4K mode, that's the burst where uh, you press the shutter and start and stop recording. So for that mode, basically, you, you, this is the one where you push the shutter, uh, shutter button, it will start recording and only stop when you press that button again. Uh, the, my preferred method is the last one, which is the 4K pre-burst. So if we set that one, what happens now is, if you're trained on something that's about to happen, like a, a bird or a kingfisher about to dive into the water, or uh, maybe some fireworks going off, you keep the camera trained, all ready to set up and ready to go on whatever's about to happen. And the second it's actually happened, you press the shutter button. It will record continuously in a sort of buffer state until you actually press the record button. So if I keep my finger hovered over the button, I'm actually going to put my hand in front of the camera and then press stop and show you what happens. So fingers on the shutter button, haven't pressed it yet. I bring my hand down and push the shutter button as soon as my hand's gone past. Now what will happen is the camera will buffer all of that. And if I go back down to here now and scrub through, you can see as I scrub through, I've recorded my hand going past for a second before and a second afterwards. So even without having pressed the shutter button, I can still record something as long as I push the shutter button within about a second after the event has happened. It's one of my favorite modes. And as long as you're on the ball and you're, you're watching what's happening, as soon as the action's occurred, push the shutter button and you've pretty much captured what you need. You can then scrub through, like I said, um, we can scrub through those photos find the bit where you want when the hand goes past, not a great shot, but then we press the menu button again, save the image, and it will save a JPEG for you. Very, very simple, but it's a, that's probably my favorite mode that I would possibly go out and use. So they're the 4K photo modes, which are all very handy, and they're gonna give people a lot of, you know, kind of fun and a chance of getting the photos they want. If we go back into the menu system now, come out of there, go back into the menu system, and come out of there, and if we go down to the next page, at the bottom, you can see you've got the post focus mode. So if we go into there and switch it on, what this will now do is actually focus on various things within a scene. So if I bring something into the scene that's close up, maybe I can focus on. Let's have a look. Now, I will say you've got to be in auto focus mode for this to work. If you're not in, if you're in manual focus and the lens can't actually move and focus, it's not going to work. So your lens needs to be in auto focus mode and your camera needs to be in auto focus mode. So you can see there, we've put something in front of the scene and we've got things behind. Uh, if I push the shutter button, see what happens. You'll, you'll watch. It's now focusing on every part of the actual scene. So it's starting on the sugar bowl at the front. It should hopefully work towards the back as well and then process everything and give you the image. Now, this image only works when it's in the camera. You can't upload this to your computer and then change focus. It's got to be done within the camera. So you can see there, we've now got that photo up here. And if I push the back of the screen, it should find the focus. You have to find the focus point that it worked on. I don't think it actually worked on that occasion because it hasn't got enough information to show. Um, so let's try that again, but have less of the actual sugar bowl in. In fact, let's use something a bit smaller. Let's use the pepper pot there. And make sure we got focus all the way to the front and back. And let's try that again. Let's bring the exposure down slightly. And try it again. So if we now hit the shutter button, it's going to start focusing on the foreground interest first. And I don't think it's worked again. 
you should be able to find focus where it focused at the back, but it's not doing it. So, let's try one more thing. Let's put, bring the chair to there. I've got the pencils there, the chair slightly further back. And let's do it again, see if it works. Yeah, it's worked that time. Obviously, it didn't have enough information in the in the background last time. So once that's processed, if we now look at the image, once it comes up on screen, you can obviously again scrub. This is sorry, this isn't one where you scrub through. This is one we actually have to just push where you want the focus to be. So if we want the focus on there, we've got the focus point on the actual type of pencils. If we want to go to the chair, you hit the chair maybe further in the background we can go right to the background it will light up green when you've hit a focus point that actually worked so you can see there we've hit the chair that was a focal point that it recorded then if we want to go to the pencils we hit the pencils so there we go so obviously working on subjects that are too in too close a proximity like this room uh, you have to fiddle about with it to make it actually work but um, obviously it does work uh, and it can be something that's quite useful but again what I found is it's actually taking a it's not taking a series of photos it's taking um, a one continuous video clip so if you're moving the camera about when you're looking through the photos when you're scrubbing through the scene will move about as well so this mo mode is best used when you're on a tripod that way you'll get um, you'll get a, a static image where you're able to pull photos from. So in a minute, I'll show you these on the screen and show you what I mean. So all of these modes are actually taking video recordings. So whether it's one, two, three, four, eight seconds, it's all gonna be one continuous um, 4K movie file. So it doesn't actually take a series of photos at different focuses. What you're doing in this mode, in the post focus, is it's like rack focusing. You're doing one continuous uh, video clip but the camera is focusing at all points throughout that image. Um, and then what you do is scrub through and pull a still from a, a still grab from that actual footage. So it's no different from me actually switching to video mode and then pressing record and then just doing the rack focusing myself. It's exactly the same thing. It just, all this software does is makes it slightly easier for you because by doing it that way, all I would then have to do is actually get the footage onto my computer and then pull frame grabs from video editing software. So in general, it's actually a really, really good um, upgrade. It's great for people that want to play with this kind of thing with post focus and also with the um, with the 4K photo mode. I think it's really, it's a worthwhile upgrade and kudos to Panasonic for giving it away for free. Um, and it shows that they, you know, even though this camera has been out for a couple of years now, they're still releasing, releasing worthwhile upgrades. So if you've got the four, uh, the GH4, I'd recommend getting this upgrade just for a bit of fun. Um, and also, if you haven't got the camera, it's another reason to actually go out and get it. It's a fantastic camera. So I hope that helps with um, upgrading and using those modes, but just upgrade it, have a play and see how you get on with it. Okay, so once you've done your firmware upgrade and you've had a play with all the features, you'll probably be interested to see what the files look like. Um, you were probably expecting hundreds or you know lots and lots of photos for each, uh, each one. What you actually end up with, as the firmware upgrade suggests, is uh, 4K video files. So with the first one, which is uh, the 4K burst, which is when you press the button, you press the shutter, it will do a couple of second burst of video. Um, you'll end up with a, a video file. All the camera's doing when the file is still inside the camera is allowing you to, to choose one point um, of that file and then save a photo from one of those frames. It's just like a frame grab from standard video, but it's just the camera doing it for you. So if we open that, have a look in the VLC player, I'll bring this over, hang on a sec, and we're gonna play back and pause it while I resize. Uh, video, zoom, let's go to half. So this is all the 4K clip was. I, I basically photographed my screen and the keyboard. Um, and you can see here, if I press play, all you're getting is a very quick 4K video file. So it's not really that much to write home about. Um, all the camera's doing, like I said, is allowing you to actually um, pull a frame from that. If we go to the next version, which is the uh, 4K burst start stop. So that basically the, the burst starts when you um, press the shutter and stops when you press it again. Uh, means you can have as, as long a file as you want and then pull stills from it. Uh, I did this for a few seconds. If I pause that again, 
and resize the video. Let's do it to a quarter. Um, so if I now press play, you can see we've just got go to version eight again. Again, it's just a um, one, two, three. I did that for four seconds, so it's a four second clip. Uh, the next one is a 4K pre burst. This is probably my favourite, and it's something Sony introduced on one of their handycams way back in 2006 when I, I first bought a Sony handycam. And what it's basically doing is all the time you're pointing your camera at something but not pressing the shutter button, it's actually doing it's actually building a file up in the in the buffer for a two seconds. So as soon as you press the, the stop button or the start button, then it will record the previous two seconds worth of footage. Uh, and you can see on this one it lasted for one, two, about three seconds. So you basically get the three seconds prior to actually hitting the shutter button recorded. So if you're waiting, like I've said before, if you're waiting for something to happen like an explosion, point your camera at it. As soon as the explosion happens, press um, play or start or stop, just press the shutter button and you will get that previous three seconds of recording. It's brilliant for filming stuff when you don't know what's going on or when you don't know when it's going to happen. You know, I've seen some great examples of like a kingfisher hitting the water. So you can set your camera up, watch what happens and as soon as that action has happened, press the shutter button and you've captured it perfectly and you can pull stills from it. Absolutely genius. That's probably my favourite um, feature that they've introduced here. I think I'll be using that quite a bit. The last one is just the um, post focus. So if I introduce that into here, you can see all it's doing, uh, you can see the focus then went from, if I start again, the focus starts on the mouse here. It's a 4K video. So the focus starts on the mouse, goes to the microphone, and then goes to the back onto the actual screen. So again, all you're doing is what's called rack focusing. You're, you're actually uh, focusing on a video clip from the front of the scene to the back, but the camera is allowing you to basically pick one of those frame grabs and actually um, pull a, a stills photo from it. So even though it's something I've been doing for years anyway and pulling stills from video, this actually just allows the camera to, to make it, well, the camera actually makes it a lot easier for you. You just go through, pick the frame you want and, and, and then obviously save it as a photo. So for me, it works pretty well. So we'll have a look in a second at how big the file sizes are from the photos that we pull from those. So here we are, I've just pulled uh, four stills from each one of those um, video clips using the camera. So I basically let the, let the clip run, picked a still from each one, saved it as a photo, and lo and behold, obviously, all of them are the same dimensions and pretty much the same um, size of file, about two and a half megabytes to three megabytes. So if we just click on those and have a look, these are the stills that were pulled. So you can see they're all pretty similar. They're all taken from different uh, sections. You end up with a square photo, not the 16 by nine um, aspect ratio, but they're pretty big. If we go to 100%, um, you can see there the quality's not bad. Now I didn't set a super fast shutter speed and didn't set the lighting up or anything, but you can see it pulls up a pretty sizable still from those, um, from those frame grabs. So, you know, if we have a look at these again, um, each of those stills pulled from each of those um, features within, you know, whether it's photo mode uh, or post focus. Um, I think it's pretty good, um, but like I say, I've been doing it for a while anyway. It just makes it a lot easier for people within the camera. But like I said, for me, the best one is the pre burst. That's where you're going to capture some really good action where you basically watch it happen and then capture the image genius so I hope this helps and um, make sure you download the firmware upload it correctly as I've said in the first part of this video and just basically enjoy what Panasonic have given you for free